Hello, I'm Kay. Next tutorial. This makeup is meant to be for my interpretation of a necromancer. So basically a sorcerer that raises dead people to do his bidding. Yeah, so I thought he's going to look fairly demonic looking in these, so. <laughs> the prosthetic that I'm actually using is from RBFX, which they make some stunning prosthetics, and I thought this one would go really well for like an evil looking necromancer, so yeah, paired with some lenses, teeth and a costume and some creepy looking makeup, I think this says necromancer. What do you think? Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, so yeah, if you'd like to learn how to recreate this makeup, stay tuned. So to start things off, I'm going to apply a plain latex ball cap because I want this character to be bald, maybe thinning, I might do some thin hair, we'll see as this goes on. Um, so I'll pop a link on the screen here to the tutorial where I teach you guys how to apply a ball cap, just so I don't have to show you how to do it in this video, as always to make it a bit shorter. Yeah, so I'm going to apply a ball cap and we'll go from there. So once I've applied my ball cap, and I've also gone around the edge of this with about three layers of liquid latex just to smooth out the edge, I'm going to work on applying my prosthetics. Now I don't tend to make a habit of using already made prosthetics, I like using my own pieces that I've sculpted and made, but um, I understand people out there, not everyone can make their own pieces. So I did a little bit of research and I found a company that makes stunning prosthetic pieces, um, like movie quality pieces and I just kind of fell in love. So I've got here a witch prosthetic with foam, made out of foam latex, which is just, I'll just show you the edges, how amazing these pieces are. They're just absolutely freaking stunning pieces. This is actually from uh, motionpictureeffects.com, um, but I'll pop the link somewhere around here. They're actually made by RBFX, they're beautiful pieces. So I thought I would jump in and give it a go and see what effect it gives. I'm still gonna make my own pieces, of course, but I thought it'd be nice to use pieces that are already made just, to, just for a change, so yeah. So as I said, these are made out of foam latex, so I'm gonna be sticking them down with some Pro Stick. Um, or Prosade, whichever you prefer. So I'm just going to apply that all to the back of the prosthetic and the area where I'm going to be applying it. Press it down and make sure the edges haven't got any glue on them because they're so fragile, you will just apply the glue over the top of it and that will help them stick down and blend. So because these edges are so thin, they shouldn't really need blending. So I'm just going to dip a cotton bud in some Pro Stick and I'm just going to apply that all in the areas that I want and then stick the pieces down. I've still got a chin to apply, but I'm gonna do that after I've blended all the edges of these pieces, so yeah. So once you've done that, I'm gonna take another cotton bud and I'm gonna soak that in some more Pro Stick and I'm just gonna roll the edges down of each of these pieces just so the really thin edges are completely stuck down and hidden. After that, I need to leave it about five minutes just to dry so it's completely set. And then I can do the same for the chin, just apply it where I know the piece is going to fit. Then when that's all dry, I'm going to take some Grimace Translucent Powder and I'm just going to really lightly dust that over the edges just to get rid of the stickiness. So there we are. Then I'm gonna start on coloring this piece. So the best way to color foam latex really is with like acrylic paint or an alcohol activated palette or maybe creams. You don't want anything that will absorb into the actual piece because you'll lose the color. So I'm gonna paint most of this with Skin Illustrator palettes, which I absolutely love. I'm gonna use probably a few different ones of these. I'm not actually sure what I'm gonna do yet. We'll see as we go on. Um, that's the joy of making these up on the spot. <laughs> so I don't wanna do the uh, like stereotypical block green. I do want there to be a green hint to it, but I want to do a kind of like zombified skin type effect. So I'm gonna do a big base of green, which I'm using, to start off with, I'm using the Effects Skin Illustrator palette. So I'm gonna be using the green from that palette just to go all over my ball cap, my face and my neck and my ears. Just gonna use a stipple sponge. So I'm not gonna do anything like no block color, no painting on, I'm just gonna stipple it on and then I can go in with some lighter colors and start breaking the tone up just so it looks more translucent. So all the Skin Illustrator palettes, like alcohol activated palettes, use like 99% alcohol. So I'm gonna use isopropyl alcohol for this. So 
It's a case of, you notice know, I've not, I've left my eyes clear and a few little areas just a bit patchy just so I can start filling it in so there's different tones in there. So then I'm going to take the prime yellow from the same FX Good Illustrator palette and I'm just going to start stippling that mainly around the middle of the face and just a few little blotchy areas on the outside edge. Again with a stipple sponge just stippling the colour on. Then, once I've got this yellowy green tone going on, I'm going to take a Grimace Cream in 1007 and I'm going to use a fluffy brush, but firm fluffy brush, to start stippling this all over the makeup. So I still want to apply it sporadically, but I still want it to be fairly heavy. Now you might be wondering why I'd apply a cream over Skin Illustrator because then I'll lose a lot of the translucency. Don't worry about that. The reason I'm doing that is because I want that to be the primary skin tone, but I want this green to peer through sporadically. You'll see as I go along, just trust me. Okay, so you can start seeing the shade I'm after. It needs to be as if once it was skin tone and it started to transform into this horrible green. So I think jaundice for witches. Yeah, so then I'm gonna start darkening up some areas like around the eyes, not the actual eyes. I don't wanna use any alcohol activated palettes on my eyes. That'd be stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, but I wanna use it on like, so around the mouth area and just round the underneath the cheekbone areas on both sides. Yeah, so I'm gonna stipple on some more Skin Illustrator palette. This time I'm gonna use a American Horror Story palette. Um, which has this really gorgeous, like, dark, dark green, which is actually called Darth Moss, which makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> so I'll use that, again, with a brush, and I'm just going to dab it around the mouth, and I said, under the cheekbones. Then I'm going to take a Grimace Black Cream, this is in 101. So I'm just going to apply that all over my eyelid and really, really lightly underneath my eye. And then I can take a new brush and just blend that out, just giving this really cool arch shape. Then taking my new brush, I can just blend that colour outwards. Yeah, so really blend it out far so there's no edge, it just looks really sunken in and dark. Then, taking the same black cream again, I'm going to start tracing on all of these wrinkles that have already been sculpted into the piece, just to really emphasise them. So, don't make it too dark, but whenever you go with the fold, try to taper the wrinkle out. So, if you got to about here, you just delicately sweep it out, so you don't want any abrupt starts or edges, you just want it to be a shadow. Then I'm going to take that Darth Moss colour again on an actual paintbrush. The reason I'm using a paintbrush is because it's really, really stiff and firm. And I can apply lots and lots of the alcohol to it, dip it in the palette and then just flick it all over the face in random patches, mainly towards the middle of the face and then outwards, just to add some more textures and broken capillaries, just to break up the texture a bit more. Then I'm going to do the same thing again with the FX palette, with the black from that palette. I'm going to apply a lot of the colour and then just stipple it just around the eye area. And I think the nostrils as well could look quite cool, or maybe the mouth. Doing this with a littler brush is a lot easier with the smaller areas. Then I'm just going to use the burnt orange from that palette. And I'm just going to colour in the little mole that's built into this piece. <laughs> Then, whilst it's all drying, I'm going to start on the hair. So I've got some really, really thin crepe hair here, which I've already started to straighten with some steam. So the idea is to cut the top so it's fairly straight, and then pull it down and start staggering it. So it's going to be a bit more sporadic. It'll look a tiny bit more natural. And then the idea is to take some spirit gun or some pro stick. I'm only going to do hair for around this area here. There's going to be hardly any of it. I mean, that's probably going to be the most I'm going to have in thick terms of thickness. And I'm going to spray it with hairsprays and stuff to make it look yucky and old later on. So I'm going to do a line of pro stick. Apply the hair, press my finger down, and then pull away so it gets a little bit thinner. So the idea is to do it like this. I might do two rows, actually. So the second row will be slightly off-center, so like a brick pattern, so it looks more sporadic. So I'm just going to time-lapse through that. So 
Okay, and I also just started pulling the hair across a bit just to, as the glue was drying, just to add like a really rough comb over effect, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so now I've got that, I'm gonna take a mixture of black hairsprays and white hairsprays and really lightly just in a ventilated area, obviously, I'm gonna go outside to do this, I think. Um, so just really, really lightly dust the hair so it starts turning gray. Okay, so really flat, really weathered hair. Yeah. Then I'm gonna take a MAC Black Fluid Line in Black Track and I'm gonna use that on the waterline above my eyes just to get rid of any hints of pink. So then all that's left for me to do is pop in my contact lenses, my costume, and I think I'm done. And there we go, so that's the look complete. So I finished the look off by popping in some fake teeth, which I got from Charles Fox in London. I popped in some contact lenses, which are called Quasar, which you can get from scaleraxl.com. Pop the link on the screen here. Uh, the costume, which is this amazingly cool, like sorceress type costume, I got from buycostumes.com. I put that on the screen as well. And yeah, so that's a tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys like my take on a necromancer. Definitely check out Motion Picture Effects and RBFX prosthetics because they are amazing. If you like this tutorial, please make sure to know the usual. Rate, comment, subscribe, and please share it because it super, super helps me out. And yeah, so until next time, bye guys.